right, hello everybody. Welcome to the show. And today we're gonna to be talking about the coronavirus, which if you're a driver, should be of some concern to you because as drivers, in a day, we could have 10 people, 20 people, a long day, you could have 30 different people getting into your car and you're in this tight little metal box and people are breathing. And before you know it, you're breathing each other's air. It's kind of gross when you think about it, but that is the case. So, uh, you know, uh, what do you do? What do you do? What do we know? What do we know about this coronavirus, which is now being called COVID-19? COVID-19. So uh, in this podcast, we're going to talk about the coronavirus, what you can do and what you can't do. Uh, as a driver uh, to do the right thing. So what do we know about this? This is a virus that came from China, and that's primarily where it is now, right? Very little of it has actually seeped out of, um, out of China. I first heard about this myself when I was uh, in Thailand last month, and somewhere around the middle of the month, I heard about it, and uh, my buddy who came to visit me said, you know, you might be quarantined when you go back to America, because I was going back on the 30th of January. And this thing was just like, there was like a bit of a panic about it. So um, when I went home, I had a four hour layover in Hong Kong. So I flew from Bangkok to Hong Kong, four hours, and then then to San Francisco. And uh, in Hong Kong, everybody was wearing those masks, you know, those masks to protect yourself. Um, from germs. And I thought, oh my God, I'm going to be in quarantine and this is going to really mess up my schedule and all that. As it turns out, I landed. Uh, you know, I never, I never checked luggage. So I just went right, right through the uh, customs, you know, showed them my passport like you do, had the little form filled out and walked right out, went outside, breathed that clean California air and uh, got in an Uber to take me to my car. So I got lucky because now people uh, are much more likely to be quarantined uh, when they land uh, in America if they if they come from from China. So it's a virus. It originated in an animal. It seems to, uh, they they think now it came from not from a bat. So some of these viruses have come from bats. Uh, people actually eat bats, um, <laughs> but. Uh, it's they think it's now it came from a snake. Uh, so somebody was eating snake and uh, that wasn't so good for, uh, for the snake, nor was it good for us human beings. So, uh, so it's mostly happening in China. Our government has acted very swiftly and strongly and they're not letting people, uh, you know, if you're coming from China, you're going to be tested and uh, you may be if you've been over in China, you may be quarantined in China or uh, when you come back, you may be quarantined here. Uh, they say it takes 14 days for it to show up in the body. So uh, that's why the uh, the number you keep hearing is 14 day quarantine because they want to make sure you don't have it. So um, that's the situation. Now, when I wrote this article, uh, it was interesting. This was I wrote an article for the rideshare guy, and at that point, uh, it was about two percent of the people um, were 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 dying from this. So, if a uh, hundred people got sick, two two to three would die. So, uh, it's not like it's uh, if you get it, you're going to die. Uh, if you get it and you're young or you get it and you're old, then, then you could have some complications which could lead to death. But a very small percentage actually die. And as of that writing, I wrote that on February 11th. So that was a week ago. Uh, there were 40,000 people that had reported being sick in China and 1,000 of those people had died. Today, one week later, I just went to look it up. And now, a week later, the number has gone from 40,000 to 73,000. So that tells you how contagious uh, this is, all right? And then out of those people, 1,873. So 873 more people have died. Now, the percentage 
is still under 3%. It's 2.6% uh, of the people that uh, got sick have died so far. So this is something that can spread quickly, uh, and it is spreading primarily in China. All right. So that's what's going on. The, the bit about the airport that you need to understand is that uh, people who could have this are being stopped and tested and, in, if necessary, quarantined. So there's not this flood of people coming into America uh, that have the coronavirus that, could, that can spread it. So your concern that someone's going to get into your car and sneeze on you and make you sick with this is unfounded. All right. There just aren't. Uh, there's like a small number of cases in, in America and uh, and our number is not growing because our government has done a really good job of keeping people that could possibly have it um, tested and, and out of the country in some cases and quarantined in other cases. All right. So it, there's like a panic about it. And I think people are now realizing that uh, in our country, it's not as bad as uh, the media was kind of kind of leading you to believe. You know, the media likes to be very sensational, very clickbaity, and um, that's what was happening here. So um, the reason I want to emphasize that is because um, there have been articles written about uh, Uber drivers and Lyft drivers, you know, rideshare drivers, discriminating against uh, Asian passengers, feeling that they could, they could have the virus, so they're not picking them up in their car. So uh, hopefully by, by now, as you've listened to the facts, you realize that's just not the case. That's not, uh, doesn't even make any sense, right? Because you don't know if somebody, I mean, I just came back from Hong Kong. You know, uh, I, I'm more likely to have coronavirus than just somebody who happens to be Asian who hasn't ever left, who hasn't left the country in the last, you know, two months. So, um, and discriminating for that, like that is just wrong, right? It's a, uh, it's an ugly, ignorant thing to be doing. So don't discriminate against passengers because they're Asian, because uh, as, I've, as I've laid out pretty concretely, um, they're not going to have the coronavirus. Likewise, some passengers have discriminated against um, Asian drivers, right? They see somebody in the front seat who's driving who's Asian, and they're saying, no, I'll, I'll get another car. So it goes both ways. It goes both ways. Now, one interesting thing that I learned about the masks, I was listening to this podcast and it was an, this guy who wrote a book called Spillover. And the topic is about animal-based uh, viruses, right? And he was uh, sharing about masks. And he said the masks are good if you're sick and you want to uh, you know, not, not, spread your, not spread your germs on other people. So if you're sick and you're coughing, it's going into the mask, right? It's not going out into the public. But he said in terms of prevention, they're not that useful. And in fact, the quote he said was, being educated and understanding it and being ready to respond and support government response is very useful. Panicking and putting on your surgical mask every time you go on a subway ride, an airplane, uh, is not nearly as useful. And he said he does not wear a mask, okay? So that, that said a lot to me. And uh, it made me realize that, you know, walking around with a mask on isn't really going to help me avoid getting sick. Uh, they're just not that useful for that. They are useful for, uh, if you are sick, uh, keeping your germs away from other people. So I found that interesting because I was at the airport uh, a week from Sunday, and I saw a driver drive by. He dropped, dro was dropping somebody off. He got out of the car and helped with the luggage, but he had a mask on. And I started to think, how would I feel if I were a passenger getting into a car with a driver that had a mask on? I would think the driver thinks he might be sick, and that's why he's wearing the mask. Because again, the mask is best when you're sick, and it prevents you know germs from spreading from your mouth out to other people. And uh, that would make me feel a little uncomfortable, you know. So um, I don't recommend you wear a mask, based on what experts are saying. Uh, it doesn't seem like it's doing what you think it's going to do, and it might have some other impact on your passengers, which you don't want, right? Um, now, what have Uber and Lyft done? They have done nothing so far. They've made no statement. Uh, let's see. Let me look at my – I'm going to look right now. 
in my Uber app and see if I have any notifications about this thing. Uh, nope, there's an update about my tax documents. Um, how satisfied am I with pool? Choose your quest. Nothing about the coronavirus. Now let's see if I look at my Lyft app. I don't think they've uh, made any comment either. Um, protect your flexibility. So that's, uh, they want me to click on that to support them in their anti-AB5 uh, campaign. And uh, refer a driver. And that's it. All right. So they're not saying anything, which I think is a lost opportunity for Uber and Lyft because they could really be leaders and, uh, you know, bring some sanity to the situation. Um, as it is, you know, people like me are writing articles and other people are writing articles and we're trying to bring some, you know, facts about the situation uh, so that, uh, you know, drivers are not are not out there panicked thinking they're going to they're going to get sick. So the key takeaways here, the coronavirus is very real. Only uh, three, let's say at the most, three out of Three out of 100 people um, are actually dying from the virus. So even if you get it, odds are very, very good. It's just going to be like a flu and it's going to pass. Um, there's no need to panic because we're doing a great job here in America of keeping people who could be infected out of the country. And if they are here, they're being quarantined uh, so that they are not contagious by the time they're back mixing with uh, the public. You can do things like washing your hands. Um, I also suggest you be aware of your conversation. So um, I, don't, I don't talk about the coronavirus. I tried talking about it and I realized people just got kind of creeped out and uncomfortable. So you don't talk about sex, religion, politics, and let's add a number four, the coronavirus. So keep those four things out, out of your conversation uh, and, and your rides will be much, much smoother. I don't recommend you wear a mask. And uh, what I'm doing is I'm just going out and driving like it's any other day and uh, enjoying my passengers and the sunshine and uh, driving as safe as I can, as, as carefully as I can, playing my jazz music, listening to a little Miles Davis. And uh, that's all you need to be doing, too. So that's uh, A to Z on the coronavirus and its impact on ride share drivers. I hope that helped. I appreciate, appreciate you guys coming around. All right, that's a wrap. Fist bump to all you drivers out there. You all rock it out there every day. I honor you, doing great work. Thank you for sharing your journey with me. Be safe out there. This is Nomad Jay saying, this episode is in the can.